Hello everyone, welcome to the Ultimate API Challenge, a place where we work, grow and learn together with different APIs as well as a variety of different tech stack in order to hopefully by the end create an end result that can be put on your web development portfolio. Your knowledge level doesn't play the biggest role, however your willingness to learn and to challenge yourself does. If you want to check out more about the project or previous challenges, I will leave the link in the description box below. In this video, we're going to be building the SpaceX website, a lighter version of it using their API that they provide. We're going to be using React.js, Apollo, and GraphQL. That's right, no more vanilla JavaScript, maybe somewhere down the line, but we're leveling up, we're going to modern JavaScript frameworks, and let's see where that brings us. So let's get started. This is how our end result is gonna look like. We have the main page, which is just this. Then we have our three rockets, Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and Starship. They all kind of have the same structure. And another one that we have is past launches, a feed with previous launches that we also get from our API. If you didn't go yet to get the starter files, go to the GitHub repository. You will need this folder, then open it in your code editor of choice. As mentioned, we're gonna be working with React, which is a modern JavaScript framework. What it basically does, React gives us reactivity. Remember in the previous challenges, whenever we have a request, we had to target a specific element and display it. And then once the request is complete, we had to hide it. So in a nutshell, kind of, you don't need to by yourself tackle these things you can just tell to display an item depending on a variable and the components kind of refresh themselves which brings me to another thing what is a component a component is a snippet of a code which you can isolate we have reactivity and we have components and routing previously we had small projects that didn't require any routing we had just like one page but in this one we're going to have several pages so it adds a little bit to the complexity of the project another thing worth mentioning we're going to be using graphql which is a different way of how the api works there is a very good article that i left in the useful resources on the website kind of explained in comparison to rest apis which is what we have been dealing with in the previous challenges it explains the difference between them what was the benefit of using one or another i hope that can make things more clear to you so check that one out we're gonna start Okay, so we got our files, we opened them and we have the starter files. We have a public folder and a source folder. Most of the components that you're going to need, I have created them. We will just need to kind of fill in the blanks. So we have the source file, we have the component. Then we have a thing called hooks, pages, routes, style, which are just global style in the components. Let's check, for example, the error. Usually the component has the HTML part of it, the JavaScript part of it, as well as the CSS all in their own folder. Some things here I'm not going to go through them. They come once you create the React app. If you want to check what those out, be my guest. I'm going to skip those and we're going to go straight away to a thing called package.json. Package.json is sort of your list of ingredients when you want to cook a meal. Just know that the important part is that a project needs to have a package.json and it should never be deleted. <laughs> We have a name and a version and several more things. We have then scripts. This is something that's going to help us run the project locally. Then we have dependencies, which include things that we are going to be using throughout the project. And then you have some other configuration. Okay, so in order to start, you would need, if you don't have it yet on your machine, you would need a thing called npm and node.js. Get npm. There we go. So you can click on here, you can download Node.js and NPM all together. If you don't manage to do that, try and Google that. I'm pretty sure that many useful links about it or leave a comment below if you're really struggling with it and I'll try to assist you. Once we have that, we will also need a thing called ESLint. It's also another thing that is helping us to format our JavaScript. We had Prettier before, we still have Prettier, but those two are kind of like working in a combination together. So you can copy this and install it on your local machine get back to our package JSON. So you see that we have here the dependencies that we want to use. We need to install those dependencies. And the way we install them is with the help of npm, we need to go to our terminal. You need to be sure that you're in the directory of your project. If I check where I am, I need to go to the starter file. I cd to the starter files, let's make it slightly bigger. And then in here I do npm i or npm install is the same and you click on enter. Warnings are fine, as long as it's not errors, we're good. Okay, cool, we got things 
to install. Let's get back to our project. And now you will see that we got a new folder here called node modules. This is what NPM does. It figures out everything that needs to have and it installs it. Also, you can see that the node modules are a little bit grayed out comparing to the other things that we have here. And that's because usually you include node modules in your git ignore. And git ignore is a file that tells GitHub what not to push to git. The opposite. It's a git file that tells what not to push to GitHub. And node modules are in them because they are quite heavy. You saw how simple it is to get node modules on your local machine. So there is really no need to push those to your repository on GitHub. Let's get back to our package JSON and see how we can run this project. So in previous challenges, you could just double click on your index.html file and it would open in the browser. With this one, if you're gonna click on this index.html, it's not gonna show you anything. So in order to make our project run, we need to execute a script, which will be called start. And the way you execute scripts, you can go back to your terminal and do npm run start. I had to run my project on another port because I already have the done version running on 3000 and I could not run it on the same port. So I have now 3001, but in your case, it's going to be 3000. So just so you know, anyway, we have our project running, we have our background and now we can start having fun. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to check what do we have? Where do we even start with this project? We have so many things. I guess it's good to mention the index HTML. How basically React works is that you define an ID on one specific div, which usually it's already defined for you. Usually it's ID root or app. This is kind of like predefined things. Later on, you tell React to find this div and to render all the components and everything you want in a specific route in that div. So that's kind of like going to be our the grand grand grandparent of all the components. Now that we have this, we can go to the app because that's kind of like our entry point to what's going to happen. In this project, we're going to have many new terms, many new things that you are going to see. If it doesn't quite feel comfortable or if it doesn't make a lot of sense yet, that's absolutely fine. As always, practice makes perfect or better and just keep on going. Eventually, it's going to make some sense and keep at it. On the top of the page, we always have imports, then we have functions or components, then we have an export of whatever we want to export. So we have client with Apollo. Apollo is a state management layer on top of GraphQL, which helps us querying the API that is written in GraphQL. Here we define the URI, which is our SpaceX API. If we copy that and go there, we will see that. Yep, there it is. Then we have cat, which needs to be defined. This is all very, very basic. I just took it from, I think the first page or the second page of the documentation of Apollo, pretty standard. So most of the time, whenever you have a setup, it's quite standard, unless you have a very specific thing that you need to change. There is nothing that we need to concentrate on here. It's our app component. We wrap our routing component, which we're gonna check in a second, in Apollo provider. So our routing is the first component that has everything available from the Apollo uh, provide anything that is inside of routing will also have access to it. That's why we are wrapping it. And it's kind of it. Let's check where we're using the app. We're using an index.js. Here is what I mentioned before. We have a document.get element by ID the root. So that refers to the div tag that we have in the HTML. And we're telling React to render the app component in it, which is going to go here. And then the app is going to go into here. And we're going to go to routing, which is in routes index. See, we have the component routing. And the routing is going to render those components. And so it goes and goes and goes and goes to a very granular scope and this is how you kind of build up your application. Okay, so we have the router, we have a switch and three routes. This is again something that comes from React. You don't necessarily need to dig into that. Just know that this is a structure that helps us to work with the routing. We have our div, which is kind of holding a navbar and every route. If we check the end result, we see that we have the navbar, which is the same everywhere. If this component is the same everywhere, then that will mean that this component needs to be rendered once on routing and then the rest of the routes are going to be rendered. So we have three routes. We have the slash route, which is our home. We go to it slash this is our home page. Then we have slash launches, which is our past launches. Yeah, there we go. And we have slash rocket slash colon ID. Colon ID means that if we go here, 
let's say if we go to slash rocket slash falcon 9 we want to get this information and this information is going to be stored in a variable called id we're going to get to that later but just so you know what this colon id means and every route needs to specify which component to render on that route let's start with the navigation because the navigation is included everywhere so let's just figure why it's not there and what we need to add to it so here we have the navbar it's a component it has the index as well the styles and the navbar component how every component starts is that you need to import React from React, declare a function and export it. So remember how I said that React has reactivity and has a thing called hooks. And hooks is something that enables us to move out all the JavaScript logic from the component to its own dedicated file. If we check here what the navigation does, so it has this part, then it has this part. If we go mobile, it also suddenly has this part and then it has, you know, on scroll, it disappears and then it's this and da 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 da. In order not to have all this logic in the navbar component, you can use a thing called hook. Here we have it, use navigation. And as you can see, it has tons of things. So if you would just split your functionality between JavaScript and component, you would lose the reactivity of it. Imagine if we would have to have all of this in the React component. That's gonna be too much and not too nice and very cluttery. So let's go back to our navbar and let's import this hook. Import, use navigation from, we go up, up, we go to hooks and then we go to use navigation. We need to create the diff for our navigation and that's gonna be a div with a class name. Yeah, in React you do class names, you don't do classes. So, and that's part of the language that they're using. They're using JSX. It's not JavaScript, it's not HTML, it's a combination of them. And sometimes it takes a little while to get your head around it. Class name is one of those things. This is a class name that we're using from Bootstrap. This project is heavily based on Bootstrap, so you're gonna see a lot of classes that we didn't define, but we are using. Save it. And if we go back to our use navigation, we see that it requires a navref. And a navref, in our case, would be kind of like a reference point to where our div is. You know how, again, we have this document.getElementById or document.querySelector. We don't do that in React. Instead of that, we have this thing called useRef and a ref that we can attach on an element. Let me show you. So first we would need to import a native hook from React called useRef and we will need to create const navref camel case equals use ref and you call that hook and you pass first a null that's just how it works and how you use that ref is on the div you're specifying that ref navref and now you can also pass it to our use navigation hook so const let's see what does the use navigation hook gives us back it gives us all of those things which we will need equals use navigation and we pass the navref right because we saw that that's what it was required and you see we have an error because the way react works is that you need to return something from that function and in our case we're going to return this so that was kind of like a very <laughs> very uh, non-complicated introduction to hook but that was kind of like the hardest part if you're we're, we're over it okay if we check our result we see that we have three rockets and those three rockets were taken from the api so if we go to our api it's very cool because you can really just select what you want you can for example click rockets you want their name you want their height you want it in meters you want the id and then you click on play or like execute and you already see what you're going to be getting back. How cool is that? You have an array of all the rockets with all the things that you mentioned that you want. If you don't want the height, no problem. ID, name, and ID, a name. That's the benefit of GraphQL. With every request that you make, you don't need to query a specific endpoint that is going to give you the whole history of all the rockets in the world. You want only the rocket, you want only the name of it, you want only the ID of it. You don't care about the height, you don't care about the missions, etc., etc. And that's why GraphQL is so powerful. Because remember, for example, in our weather API, that's one of the biggest ones that we had, the endpoints, especially the one that would return the weather, would return us a lot of information and we were not using all of it. If we would have a GraphQL, well, API, then we would have been able to define which information we need and get only that one. Why it's important to get only the information that you need or why is it helpful is that it decreases the load of the page. The less information you need to get back, the faster your browser can load it. And that's pretty awesome. So we want to kind of create this thing because we want to get this information back. 
and that's where GraphQL enters the stage. We will need to import a thing called GQL from Apollo client and we're going to create a const get rockets names which equals to this GQL tag. You open backticks and then you open curly brackets. That's our query, right? Because that's exactly what we have here. We're copying it exactly the same. Write in rockets. We open another curly bracket, ID and name and save it. This is our query that we have right here. But now we need to have this kind of like execution button, right? Execute the query because this is all cool. We have the playground, but how do we do that in our code? For that, we will need a hook called use query from Apollo. And the way you can use it is the same way as we did with the use navigation. You do use query, you call it, and you pass the query that you want to call it with. So in our case, it's the get rockets names. This works the same way as the use navigation. It returns us some information. We know that it returns us the data. It also gives us a loading state and an error state if such occurs. So this is going to be kind of our template. You're going to be seeing all over the code that we're going to repeat this const data loading error or loading error data. It doesn't really matter in which order you're writing them as long as they are named this way and you're getting it from the use query where you're passing the query that you want to make, which you defined above. If we're going to have an error, we're going to render a component that I have already included called error. Let's first import that component, import error from error. And then we're going to have another one for loading from a loader, sorry, loader. And now if we have error, then we're going to return because we have to return the component error. That component is also accepting the message. So we're just going to pass to it whatever Apollo gives us. Same thing goes for the loading. If loading, then return loader. I usually prefer to do the loading state first because first we're going to have loading and then error and then maybe a response. So yeah, let's just do it this way. But then if we have the data, so if none of those two ifs are true, we're going to land on this one, which is our happy scenario, our component render. We need to include here our other components, which is this one, as well as this one. Those components are called top menu and side menu and we're going to render them inside of that div. And that's why we will need to wrap this in a parentheses. First, we're going to have a div and with a class row. See, look at that magic. Boom. This is a thing called Emmet and it comes together in Visual Studio Code. You just press on tab and it auto completes whatever you wanted. And the first component we're going to write is going to be our top menu. We can close it. So let's visit the top menu component to see what it will need. Where do we have it? Here we go. It has rockets, is menu open, is mobile view and toggle menu and our side menu. Oh, look at that. It has also rockets, is menu open, is mobile view and toggle menu. If you remember, we got those things from our use navigation hook. We can just put them here is when you open and you pass this information to the component by defining the name of it and then passing the variable. This would be the name and this would be the value of it. Is mobile view, is mobile view, set is menu open, set is menu open. Copy that and write the same way for the side menu. Another thing that we need was rockets. Yeah, it gives us an error because I did a save and it tries to loop over rockets, which we didn't give it. Our rockets are going to leave in data. There is a small twist. So if we check the GraphQL playground, we will see that we have four rockets, but we want only those three. So we can do it once we receive the data, we can loop over the data of the rockets and slice or shift or something from the method arrays that vanilla JavaScript is offering us. We can use that or we can already use something that GraphQL offers us and this way we already say that hey you know what this data don't deliver to us we're not interested in it so if you see here we have a thing called offset and we can limit it to one watch how falcon one should disappear yeah and that's exactly what we want so this is what we're going to do here we're going to replicate that we're going to write offset one and then the data we're going to pass here we're going to do rockets data dot rockets we're passing the rockets from the data dot rockets. How do we know that it's rockets? Because we have here data and rockets. Pass the same thing to the other component as well. And let's see if we're happening. Yes, look at that. We have things going on. The styling is not loading because we need to import it. Style, import, styles. Save it. And there we go. We have all those cool things. Oh no, toggle menu is not a function. What? Oh, okay. We did say that we want a toggle menu. And in our case, toggle menu is going to be set is menu open. Okay, so we're going to change the name of it, save it, refresh. 
Yeah, now that works. Awesome, let's check if it works in mobile. Woohoo, awesome. Cool, so we have our number working and we can go now to our homepage and let's try and display this information on our homepage. So let's close the navbar. We don't need that one anymore. Okay, homepage. So we have our React, we have our style already imported and we have our, let me close the sign up. We have our main div that has this image. This image comes from the home container, from the style. The thing that we need now, let's remove the rockets. We need the thing called company. There it is. And we need the name and the summary. Let's check it out. Yep, that's what we have. So I know that it might be an overkill to do a query to get the company's name that we already know that is SpaceX, but for now, just for the fun of it, just for the practice of it, let's do that. Although you are right, it doesn't make much sense. If you remember from the previous part, we had to import the GQL. Let's also import the use query because we know we're gonna be using it from Apollo client. Let's write our query, const get company info equals GQL backticks. You don't have to write it in capital letters, but sometimes I feel that it's more out there if you write it in capital letters and you know that, okay, this is my query and that's your kind of like coding style. We open curly brackets, which is the object, company, name, and the summary. Now in here, we're going to do const data loading error and we're going to equal it to use query and get company info. Save it. And as we remember, we're also going to have the same components. I'm going to copy that from our navigation error and loader, paste it here. You can also copy the error state and the loading state because that's going to be repeated throughout the whole application. Close the side nav, save it. And now whenever we have our data, we would want to display it in another component that is called main header. And in this case, we need to go to components and main header. So the same is going to apply to the route of the components above. Let's fix that because we are in the folder of pages. We're not in the components and the navbar was in the components. Main header, we're going to render it here and we're going to write main header and let's check out what this main header is, what it expects. It expects a name and a description. Name is going to be our data.name and our description is going to be the summary. Uh, no, because it's data.company.name and the same here, data.company.summary. Let's check it out. Yeah, we have that. Awesome. Okay, now if we go to our past launches, we would like to see some information here. How do we get there? Let's open the past launches, import the things that we know we're going to be using, which is the GQL, use query, as well as the com components of error and loader. And for the past launches, which query will we need to make? It's going to be launches pass. So let me remove the company. Um, we can limit it to maybe 15. For our UI to work, I know we need the ID. So we need the launch site, site name long, the links, the article link, video link we don't need. We need the mission name and Flickr images. We have this, let's query it. Yeah, perfect. Okay, now we can create our query here as well. Const get launches query equals GQL. What will happen if we just copy paste it? Save it? Yeah, awesome. That's what we like. Now we're gonna do the same thing. Const data error loading or loading error equals use query and we pass the launches query. Then we can go back to our home and copy this for the loading and the error. You see, it's very repetitive and the beauty of components is that you can just include them wherever you want. You code them once and then just import, use it, and that's it. Now the data that we're going to have, let's check the example, the past launches. So we have an image and we have the names and we also have a link because you see if I hover on it, there is like a link at the bottom. And if I click on it, it brings me to the actual article about it. So. Throughout coding this challenge, I found out that not every launch has the article link or the image. We would need to check that one out. So we would need to filter that data first. And because we cannot do that in GraphQL, at least to my knowledge, we will need to do that pure JavaScript data manipulation. And we will do that here after we know that we don't have a loading state or an error state and we have the data. So for that, we will be able to use a thing called filter. Con launches equals data dot, what was that? Launches past dot filter 
filter accepts the first par parameter, which is the launch. We want to tell JavaScript that, hey, filter us all the results. So give us back only the results that have the link and have the image. And the way we do that, we can say launch.links.article underscore link. If we would leave it at this, it would mean, hey, filter us everything that has launch.links.article.link underscore link. Everything that doesn't have it is not going to make it to the filter and it's not going to be stored in our launches const variable. But we also want to have an image, at least one. So we do end end, find us something that also has launch.flicker images, launch.links.flicker, how do you write the flicker? Flicker underscore images dot length because if that one is an array is bigger than zero save it and this way in this launches web uh, art uh, variable we can ensure that we're going to have only information about launches that have all the specific data that we want so where are we going to pass this launches we're going to pass it to a component called launches feed so let's import that import launches feed from we go to components launches feed and then we included it just under our h1 and let's open the launches feed and see what it expects us. I assume launches. Yeah, it expects the launches. So we're just going to pass to it launches as launches. Cool. Let's see if that... Oh, look at that. Am I on the right one? Yeah, 301. In order not to have the same as we had before, that I was looking at the ready result. Yeah, cool, 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 cool. And the link works. Yeah, the link works. Okay, so we got our launches to work. If you're interested to see how this thing works, so we have the launches feed, which is this component. The only thing that this component is doing is only making a loop and renders per item in the array a component. And that's another power of the components. So you see, you don't need to hard code the amount of components that you're going to have. You can say, hey, whatever you have in that array, show it to me. That's what we have. So this is a component, this is a component, this is a component, and so on and so forth. We got that thing to work as well. Past launches are done. We have the home and now we can go to the rocket. And the rocket is the fun part of the whole challenge and the most complicated one. So we have three rockets. How do we know which one of them we want to display? Let's say we go to Falcon. How do, you see the page doesn't know what it, what happens. The only thing that changes is this part. And remember we did it in our routing that we had a colon ID. We can extract this information. React already has it for us. So let's do that. We can do that by deconstructing the props that we have and writing match. Match is something we didn't pass, but React passes it for us const rocket id equals match dot params dot id and let's console log our rocket id from here the terminal yeah falcon 9 that's exactly what we have go to falcon heavy falcon heavy starship and now let's check in our playground let's remove our launches if we want to get the information about a rocket where is a rocket a single rocket here see it requires an id we knew that it will need an id let's for example take starship we put it here and let's define what we need we need a lot of information the name height both feet and meters we need a diameter feet and meters stages cost per launch and engines where are the engines here oops here are the engines we need the type we need the number propellant one propellant two thrust to it and let's check if that works yeah that works all right so let's write this query here but before we write the query we know that we need to import things so we import gql use query from apollo client and then we have components we're just going to copy them and then we're also going to copy this part we also want to define our query get rocket info gql and let's just copy that there we go the only thing is that we have a hard-coded starship here, but we want to use the rocket ID that we have. Let's see how we can work with that. Let's first do our regular thing with data loading and error equals use query and we pass the get rocket info. We can also pass here the variable rocket ID. And the way we do that is we do a second argument to that function, to that hook, we write variables and we define rocket ID. Now, how we can get it in here by defining query, get rocket info. You can repeat that one out, it doesn't play a big role. Then you open parentheses and you define the name of the variable that you're expecting. So the name of the variable that we passed here, which is rocket ID, and you define the type of it, which is going to be ID, and we're going to require it. That's why you need to put an exclamation mark. And then here, instead of our hard-coded thing, we can write our rocket ID. And let's console log data here to see if that one works. Or let's do data.rocket.name. Let's remove this. Data.rocket.name. Save it. Starship. 
Falcon Heavy. Yay, look at that. That's our other console log that is working. Yeah, Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, Starship. High five. All right, so now we get to do all the fun part. And by that, I mean recreating this whole interface, which is gonna be a lot of fun. I can tell you that we will need a component called rocket and we're going to return here that rocket. So because the interface has quite a lot of things going on here, we're not going to do any further logic in the rocket page. We're gonna do it in the rocket component. And in order to do that, let's open the rocket component to see what it needs. It needs the rocket, okay. So we're gonna pass it the rocket, which we find in data.rocket. We will also need the ID of the rocket. So in order not to refetch the ID, because we do have it in the rocket ID, we can spread whatever we have from our rocket. So this will mean that rocket is going to have now all of these things. And we can add an ID to it and say that it needs to have the value of the rocket ID. Cool, all right. Now I guess we can go to our rocket component and start the fun from here. Okay, so in here we will need two components, rocket header and tech info. Let's deconstruct all the values that we get from the rocket to get it into their own variables because we're gonna be using them quite a lot. And instead of writing rocket dot, rocket dot everywhere, let's just make it a little bit lighter to watch. So the things we need is our ID, name, and you know what, I'm just gonna copy it from here. We need the height, diameter, stages, cost per launch, and engines. And this all equals to our rocket. So the first component is going to be this one, which is the rocket header. Let's check what it requires from us. An ID and the name. Okay, we can provide that. Also, what is a fragment? A fragment is when you don't want to write a div, a useless div, you can write fragment. And why you need a useless div? Because if you have a div and another div like this, React tells you that it has to have a parent element. So it, they both need to be wrapped in one element. And usually that would require writing another div and sometimes it breaks the layer. So that's why they have introduced fragments. What we will need to do, put this div, I have already created it. I'm gonna paste it. As a class name of rocket, deflex, flex column, align item center, justify content around. These are just things that help us to achieve the layout that we have. And inside of it, we're gonna use the rocket header component which we said that requires what? ID and a name. We're gonna send ID and we're gonna send a name. Let's check if that one works. Yes, look at that. Look at, look at, look at that. I'm so excited. <laughs> it's always so nice to see things that they are working. The next section would be the one below it that has a table and has a rocket. Where do we get those images from? I have already prepared them. They're in the public, in assets, and we have all the things we need here. Usually you would be getting it probably from some another API, but in this case, we're just gonna reference our local folder. You see that we have here the two sections. One of them is like this and another one is this. And you see that they are quite similar. So they have a table and they have an image on the side. They have one, two, three, four rows, both of them. The only thing that changes is the title and the values here. But apart from that, everything is sort of the same. To show you another magic of components and their reusability, we're going to use the same component for these two sections. And that component is called tech info. The way that we're going to differentiate between the two of those, if you can see one is about the rocket and another one is about the engine. I decided to pass a flag called its engine. And if it's an engine, then it's going to show this layout. And if it's not, then it's going to show the first layout. Our default layout is going to be the rocket. All right, so let's check what the tech info component needs from us. It needs a name, a rocket, an engine, and the flag is engine. Let's copy maybe that so we will not forget. And we're gonna put it here, tag info. And what it requires is all of those. In the first one, we're not gonna have an engine. We're just gonna have name, rocket, and if it's an engine. So we don't need this flag because it's not an engine. So we just need to send the name and the rocket. Name would be name. And the rocket would actually be all of those things that this table needs. We're going to be constructing our rocket variable, which includes height, diameter, stages, and cost is going to be cost per launch. I decided to do it this way because all of the other variables are very short, so we can do that. And to show you that it is possible to do it this way. Save it. Let's go to the tag info. This component is working for the two sections. So there is a hook it's called use tech info, and we're gonna be here writing all the logic that is needed in order to make all of this work. It's not necessarily gonna be a hook hook because we're not gonna be using any of the reactivity functionality from React, but just for the sake of it, 
let's just keep it consistent and call it a whole. Let me just close the things that we don't need because things start to get a little bit more complicated right now with all the variables that we need to remember. So we have, have our main component called rocket. Then we have a tech info component, this one. Then this component is not displaying the table, but we have a thing called info table, which is this kind of like our hint, what we will need. We will need a title and the data in order to show this. And the data is going to be an array that has a title and a value. So it's gonna look like this. We're gonna have our title, then we're gonna have our, our data, which is an array. Every element in the array is going to have its own title and its own value. And that's what we're gonna be constructing in order for the info table component to receive this kind of data. The construction is going to happen in our hook. Open up that hook, use tech info. We're gonna do const use tech info as our function. It's going to accept everything what we're sending which is this, going to accept it here. Let's also import it in our tech info, import use tech info from, need to get out of the components and go to hooks and use tech info. Then we're doing a const table content equals use tech info and we're passing again all the information that we're getting. In the use tech info, let's maybe start with the title. So things are gonna start making sense. Const header equals name dot two upper case. I know this is something you can also do with CSS, but we're learning. Return. We're going to do it as an object because we want to return several things and one of them is going to be the header. Okay, so we have the header in the table content, which you can access through ta table content header. And let's import our table, our info table, and see how it works. Import info table from info table. And we're going to include it in here, info table. And what did info table need? A title and data. So for now we can pass it only the title, which is going to be in table content dot header. Save it. What do we get? Default is not a function. Export default. We forgot to export it. Use tech info. Save it. Yeah, so the next problem is that our info table is trying to map over something that we don't have. But let's comment that for a second to see if that works. Yes, so we're getting our Starship here. All right, uncomment it back. Save it. Now we are back in our use tech info and we need to basically create this kind of table. And the way we do that, just for simplicity, which is funny, we're going to create separate variables per row. For example, const first row equals, let's go with the titles. So the title, depending if it's an engine or not, it's going to have a different title it's or height or number. So we're going to say is engine. If it's an engine, then the title is going to be number else it's going to be height. See what I'm doing here? You can copy that down, name it second row, and it's going to be propellant one. And this one is gonna be a diameter. Same goes, you can do it yourself as well. Third row, this one is going to be number two, if I'm not mistaken, yes. And this one is stages. And fourth row is going to be thrust to weight or cost per launch. Now, in order to unite it, we can do const body equals an array, and you're gonna just include all of these values there. First row, comma, second row, comma, third row, comma, and fourth row. Now we have the titles and it's time to get the value as well. So the values are gonna be dependent if it's engine or not. In the first row, it's going to be engine.number. And where does this come from? This comes from here. We have engines and then we have the number and all of this data that we already fetched, that we already got. We're just using it in a way that we want to use it. So you could dig into that yourself and try to mimic the end result by yourself. I'm gonna speed through it and see you at the end result of this table. All right, and now we also need not to forget to export it. And another thing that we have is the image. Const image equals to this. Uh, we're taking the name, we're replacing any spaces that we have in it with the help of regular expressions. And we attach in at the end a dot PNG, which is the format of the image. And let's pass it, image. Now in our tech info, we can pass, what was the name of it again? Data. And data is going to be table content dot body. Let's see if that one worked. Okay, that one worked, but we're missing the image. And the image is going to be inside of this div. It's gonna be a tag image with the source of table content dot image. And the alt can be 
the name of the rocket. Save it and look at that. That's what we have. Cool. But we have only one. We need also the second one and that's going to be much easier now that we have it. We go back to our rocket and under here we're writing tech info. We're going to pass the name which in this case is going to be engine dot type we're going to pass engines and we're going to pass the flag is engine now you don't have to specify that it's true or false because just by including the is engine as a prop it already means that it's true so what did it happen cannot read property number of undefined uh where name rocket engine is engine oh it happened here so that happens in use tech info Okay, so why that happened was because we passed engines instead of engine. And there you go, look at that. Wait, are we missing some class? Because that one is gray. Oh, we need to import the styles. Yeah. Cool, look at that. Everything is working. Oh no, Falcon Heavy isn't working. Mm. Okay, so I found that the regular expression was a tiny bit off, but now it looks like everything works. Check it out. Awesome. Past launches. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, that was all for this challenge. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that was not too hard to follow. Um, there were a lot of new concepts that we have covered. So as I said, really don't feel um, the pressure to understand all of them because it really takes time, takes practice, takes many, many iterations in order to get the point. So just keep on going. Let me know if you enjoyed it. If you have any more wishes to what we should cover, what we should go more in depth. And I hope to see you in the next one. Stay safe and have a good day, night, evening, wherever you are. And see you next time. Bye.